What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the park, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. All right, welcome everybody. Hello, hello. John Corcoran here. We are live. I'm the host of the Smart Business Revolution podcast, and I'm here with... Dr. Jeremy Weiss. I am the host of Inspired Insider podcast. And, Thanks for uh, having me. I feel like I'm on your podcast, even though it's kind of going on both our podcasts. That's right. That's because I try and uh, boger at the beginning. I try and just jump in there and and uh, totally grab the cool reins. <laughs> All right. Well, we're, uh, we're excited to be here. Today, we're going to be talking about a dynamic duo, two really powerful tools that work really collaboratively if you do it right. And so the topic of today's episode is podcasting and LinkedIn. We're actually broadcasting this as a live LinkedIn live on, on LinkedIn, such an amazing tool. Um, but I have an interesting analogy for those of you who haven't dove into uh, LinkedIn and gotten the most out of it. I have an interesting analogy, which I'll share in a moment for um, how it's similar to a networking event that you're not sure how to get the value out of it. And there definitely is ways to do it. So first of all, before we get into that, this episode is brought to you by Rise25, where we help B2B businesses to get clients, referrals, and strategic partnerships with done for you podcasts and content marketing. If you are listening to this and you are curious, you're thinking, you know, should I do a podcast? Well, we say yes, especially if you are in a B2B space, you have a B2B offering because a podcast is so many different things. It is content marketing. It is personal professional development. It's business development. It's referral marketing. It's strategic partnerships. If you do it right, which a lot of people don't, if you do it right, it's one of the most invaluable assets that a business can have. That's why leaders like Gary Vaynerchuk are saying that everyone should have a podcast. So if you have any more questions about that, go to rise25media.com or you can email us at support at rise25media and uh, reach out or go to my LinkedIn page and book a time and we can talk. So um, Jeremy, I want to throw something out there before we get into the conversation, you know, because sure. this is a powerful, I like that dynamic duo because it is really powerful, a podcast with LinkedIn. And I want to throw it out there because we're going to talk about both of them. But if you maybe we'll choose the best comment or something like that. And we will do an actual uh, LinkedIn profile review for you. We are oftentimes looking through our clients and friends, LinkedIn profiles, and we tell people, and we may get into this, you should treat it like a high converting landing page. Like if you have neglected your LinkedIn. Um, so maybe if there's, I don't know how, how we want to do it, John, but uh, the best comment or a comment that we choose, we will actually review your LinkedIn profile. And we'll, we'll tell you some things on this conversation on what to look for to optimize your, your LinkedIn profile. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. So if anyone wants to post directly and just um, let us know that, that you'd like our review, we'd be happy to do that. And um, you know, one of the reasons that this came up, you know, I was talking with one of our clients this week who hadn't quite figured out how to tap LinkedIn. Um, he knew that it was valuable and wasn't sure what to do about it and how to make it valuable. And, you know, I was that way not that long ago. I remember for many years saying to you and to others, you know, at one point, at some point I will dive in and I'll figure this out. And once I did, I was so glad that I did because so many amazing relationships have come from, from, you know, getting to know using pot, using a LinkedIn and in many ways using it in collaboration with a podcast and we'll get into some of the different ways that you can do that um but you know my analogy that i use is it's kind of like going to a party okay you go to a party and there's 300 people there and in the back of the room very back of the room there are 50 of the most high caliber amazing connections people that you've been dying to meet influencers in your space ideal prospective clients referral partners people that you've been dying to meet and get to know they're in the back of the room but as soon as you hit that front door you are bombarded by 25 people who try and sell you life insurance. They try and sell you this, that, and the other thing. They're, they're pitching their stuff on you. And so you immediately write off the entire room. You say, man, this place sucks. I'm not going to go in at all. Well, LinkedIn is kind of like that because um, if, you are, if you just look at the incoming solicitations that you get, and I get them too, you get a lot of people who are just doing a sales pitch, right? And you could, you could very easily just write it off. 
But if you don't, if you're willing to be proactive and go out and optimize your profile and proactively reach out to people and build some connections and be genuine about it and don't hit up people with a sales pitch, just like you wouldn't at a networking event most of the time, most people wouldn't, then it's gonna be a lot more valuable to you. So that's just the analogy I wanted to start off with. It's so good analogy. Yeah. So um, first of all, well, I mean, with, it's similar to like if you eat at an Italian restaurant or something and it was terrible, like, Ugh, I'm never doing this again. I'm never eating any Italian. I mean, it's, you know, it's very valuable. And so don't let other people's actions on the platform taint you. That's right. So let's start with one of the most important first pieces, which is optimizing your profile before you do anything else. You got to optimize your profile. And Jeremy, do you want to just start with a couple of points or tips or yeah. advice for people? For yeah, I mean, it's like, because listen, if you're reaching out to people, you and basically they're going to check you out on LinkedIn. And by the way, and, and John, you know this too. If you, a lot of times when you search people's name on Google, LinkedIn, your LinkedIn profile is, is typically in the top three search results. So even if they're not on LinkedIn, people are like, well, I don't use LinkedIn that much. It doesn't matter. Like if someone's searching for you and trying to find out information about you, LinkedIn may come up in their search results and they're going to go to LinkedIn yeah. and see this person is not credible. So you really want to make sure that your LinkedIn profile shows the your expertise in its full capacity. And so some of the things to look at is... Um, I, I think I told someone this last week and I said it in a nice way, but I said, your LinkedIn profile is a disgrace. I mean, it's an absolute disgrace. And I said it in a loving way because it doesn't represent how amazing you are, you know, and one, people don't even put a picture. Like if you were to think of a website, your, your landing page, your website, your homepage, you wouldn't just not have a banner on your website. You just would not have a, just leave off what you do. Okay. That's what people are doing with LinkedIn. So make sure you have some kind of banner that actually displays what you do. I've seen people do flowers and rocks and mountains. This is like nothing to do. So they have something there, which is better than just the, the default blank, like blue, whatever comes in LinkedIn, but it doesn't give you your, your authority. And so you want some kind of banner uh, image that shows that you're an authority in the space. It may show, you know, shows um, social proof logos on there. It may, you know, shows what you do, uh, you in action in front of a crowd, whatever it is. The next piece is um, your, the title underneath your name. You know, you want something, people are often looking at your name, they're looking at what you do and all people put founder, CEO, that's it. That's what they have. Like, it, you need something that displays, that shows people what you do. You know, like for us, it's helping B2B businesses connect to their dream 100 clients um, and get it, making sure you get ROI using a podcast. So what we do, I don't say founder or CEO or whatever it is. The next piece that you should think about is the about piece. What do you do? And remember, as you could see, if you're watching the video part, you only get like a sentence. And when I say that, you could click see more and it opens up, but most people aren't going to click the see more button. They're just going to read what you have there and move on. I don't remember the last time I clicked the see more button on someone. I just kind of got a general gist of them. So you really have that one sentence. So, so look and see what actually shows up in that one sentence. Because when you click John, you want to click the see more, but I mean, it opens up into like a lot of stuff, but which is great, which is, it's good to have and you want to have it, but make sure you pay special attention to that first sentence. The next piece is the video, right? If you scroll down, if you're watching the video, there's the featured section. And this is people, it may look intimidating if you don't have anything there. It's really just a link to a video. Okay. This is yeah. a link to a YouTube video and it, shows up very nicely on LinkedIn. So you should, if you don't have them, you should have some video, you should create videos. It could be, if you have a podcast, you can create, you know, have podcast videos. If you, um, you know, don't have a podcast, get it, start, start a podcast. No, but um, have a video to podcast, or if you have client testimonials, right? 
um, client testimonials, have those made. You know, our friend Ian Garlic is, is awesome at creating that. If you have questions about that, ask him and he, they will actually help interview your clients and create a nice video for you. And, and we have that, Ryan Howard here who volunteered. Thank you, Ryan. Oh, Ryan, so let's bring him up. Yep, yeah, there you go. Ryan Howard, we'll do it real time here. Yep. Ryan Howard, I have to I have to bring it up on mine because it's a little small on yours. But, but you could see like actually – um, it's pretty good. Um, it, he's got like some kind of customized banner. That's really good. Learn more free masterclass. It, see, it still doesn't tell me exactly what he does in that, in that headline. Um, your faith at work transform the way he works. So maybe to him, it's clear to me, I'm wondering, should I hire him? Like who's a good fit for, for him? And so right. maybe the headline could be a little clearer to me. Um, discover how your work fits into God's plan. So I'm still not sure if my business is a fit for what he does. So make sure that you, you know, we have how helping, who do you help? Like helping blank, do blank, accomplish blank. Um, yeah. so more, more, maybe a little more copywriting a good. So he's got, he's got a great picture there. He's got at least a banner with something with the website, which is good more than 95% mm -hmm. of most people maybe be a little clear on who you serve and then the discover how you work. So you, you're, you're Ryan, you're doing a good job overall. I think there's a few tweaks you can make to make it even better. And I think, um, if you scroll down, so I would probably, and he's got over 500 plus connections. That's another thing. Sometimes people, if you see 197 connections, it just it just doesn't look like this person's an authority in the space. Like you have no connection. Right. So you want to get to that 501, 502. So it says 500 plus connections. Just get to that point at least. I know, John, you have like 17,000 or more connections on LinkedIn, but it still says 500 plus. So it doesn't really matter. Um, so I would say get really clear with who you serve and how you help that person because I don't know who you serve from the get go. And, and John and I who do, you know, make a lot of referrals to people, it's helpful, even if we're not a client, like, oh, when we hear of this, you know, Ryan serves this type of person, we can recommend them. So you know, one other thing I'll point out here, it's kind of buried down here, but it says he has a PhD. So I'm wondering if maybe it should mm. say Dr. Ryan S. Howard at the top here, or, yeah, or, or Pat yeah. mentioned the PhD, because that's a real like, comma PhD. PhD or something. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. It doesn't totally. say it anywhere until you get further down, you know? Yeah. So it's and just he's got, yeah, that's a good point. Follow Ryan to discover how your work. So again, same thing. I would I would probably rework that if uh, that headline of who you know follow Ryan discover how your work fits in. It doesn't really tell me who's an ideal client for you when they're reading this that would speak to them. Like if you said whatever organization we help this type of organization and blah 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 blah. So right. um, and if you want to, so you have some featured stuff there, which is good. I don't know. One of them is an ebook, and one of them is. Actually, podcast. that is a podcast. So that's that's mm -hmm. good. So you can see, you know, um, you have around, you know, a thousand connections and that's really credible. Like the John Deere that obviously it's a well-known brand that mm -hmm. you have there. So it's good that you have that in there 13 years. Um, you could even add some some stuff about what you do in there where it's like senior supplier development engineer, add some details in there. Um, but I mean, that's, that's kind of the low hanging fruit. I mean, this is all good, good stuff, um, that you have in here. Um, so those the are the other thing I'll, things. Uh, I'll point out is sometimes you see people where they have a company written in at, under experience or a university. It, it, it happens with the universities as well. And there's no logo next to it. <clears throat> and sometimes you see it up here too where you see the company name and there's no logo next to it. It just has the default yeah. LinkedIn one. The reason for that is either they don't have a LinkedIn page, which immediately like gets a company a, page, a company page, right? Exactly. A company LinkedIn page. And, and, and so when I see that, and I think a lot of people say that they question, is this person legitimate? And sometimes the reason is because they've had their LinkedIn page for a long time. And if it's if it, the company does have a company page, all you need to do is go edit your profile, go into where you've listed that university or that company, delete it and type it out again. And LinkedIn will will automatically suggest other you know, uh, official pages. 
and then you can connect it and then that will bring in the logo and it just gives you a little bit air of legitimacy it's i'm surprised to me how many people that are really established you know uh authorities and experts but they haven't done that one thing and it's one of those subtle things that kind of diminishes their credibility one other thing i would just throw and then i'll get back to you jeremy throw out here is you mentioned earlier the backgrounds at the top this is a beautiful background ryan that you've created here or Dr. Howard, I should say. Um, but you, you see how is the city backdrop? A lot of people, they just put it, their city's backdrop in in the image at the top there. And I, I'm not sure that it, get, it doesn't really hurt you, but it doesn't gain you anything. And I don't know if he's from Waterloo, Iowa. So I don't know if that's Waterloo, but other people do this. They'll put Seattle as the background or Chicago's skyline as the background or San Francisco's skyline as the background. And what you want there is to convey to someone who's just landed on your page immediately who you are and what you do. And the city of San Francisco background doesn't do that, doesn't accomplish that. So I just wanted to bring that up. But back to you, Jeremy. The other thing I was going to talk about, if you go down, you brought up a good point about the John Deere thing. So it seems like from my, from looking at this, he's still working at John Deere, but he has the helps. He has this helping discover how your work fits into God's plan thing. But like you just mentioned, he may not have a LinkedIn uh, company page. So mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. not showing up here. So right. he should have a LinkedIn company page for whatever that whatever his you know company is that helps you know discover how your work fits God's plan. And then that should come up first is as the actual company experience along with John Deere. Because yeah. it looks like he doesn't have you know, that company page set up or he doesn't have a link to his profile here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I think that's great. This is a great, over, uh, great overview. Ryan, thank you, Dr. Howard, for being our guinea pig on that. Appreciate that. Um, hopefully that will be uh, helpful um, for all of you for for giving you kind of the background on that. Uh, so we talked about optimizing your profile. Let's, we mentioned about building your connections. You wanna make sure you have at least 500 plus connections because then it'll say 500 plus. It doesn't say um, exactly the number. It'll literally say the number of, uh, of followers on there. And the next piece we wanna talk about is what your outreach message should be. So when you're proactively reach out to, reaching out to people, whether it's part of a consistent dedicated effort to reach out to people in your industry, or it's just one person or two people, like someone you casually came across and you just want to connect with them. What should it be? What shouldn't it be? So Jeremy, what what's good outreach etiquette? Yeah. I mean, you want to reach out in a giving fashion. Okay. And you want to customize it. I mean, I actually go through and when someone writes a, a good message, right, to connecting. This is not an in-mail message, right? What I'm talking of when you connect with someone, you can write a customized message. And I mean, I I don't accept everyone. I, I want it to like, what's the reason I'm I'm connecting with this person? The person connects with me. So, you know, there's the, I guess, the 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 best all the way to worst. The best is customizing it. Like if I said, John, I see your, you know, you know, just find some common commonality. And also the best outreach message is a give to someone. So if I said, John, I saw, you know, from you were, um, you know, you were looking, I saw from your comment somewhere that you were looking at good places to eat. I found that this is a great place, you know, just something serving them. And, and it's, you can see one, I read something that you've written Two, I'm answering something that you've written in a giving fashion and how can i help you now obviously if you have a a podcast you can if that person's a fit you can give you know ask them to be on the podcast and give you have to give a backup of all the social proof elements of why they should say yes but it doesn't have to be right off the bat you can you know serve them in some fashion if you actually care about looking at what that person has posted so any giving message whether it's, you know, um, I'm going to feature you in, you know, we've written articles and say, hey, we want to feature you in this article. We want to feature you on our podcast. There's people are still skeptical when they get that. So you have to back it up. Um, yeah. The, you know, I guess on the other end of the spectrum, what things not to do is, you know, just throw a pitch, a three paragraph. We've all gotten those like a three paragraph pitch on all the services someone does 
go, hey, we have web development. We have this, we have that, we have this, we have that. And I'm like, I didn't even ask you. That. I didn't say I had a need for that, nor did I ask you. Um, and then kind of like the laziness factor in, is I, I think I customize every single one of my connection requests. So I will at least put their name. I'll find something in their profile or their company that I admire or like and a reason why we should connect. Um, people sometimes put zero message. So it just says, I forgot what the default message in LinkedIn is. And sometimes it's just people write, you know, you came sometimes up in- Sometimes it's very generic, yeah. You and came gonna, up in my search or something. Yeah. You came in my and, search, I'm like, well, that's not a good reason of why I should connect with you, right? So if right. you're trying to be compelling, you came up in my search. I'm like, well, so I just came up. So you thought, you thought I'd be good. Um, right. Or, you know, we share a mutual connection. Like if they name someone I actually know, that's different. But they go, we have a lot of mutual connections. Well, you kind know, John, you have like 17,000 connections. Like you probably could have 100 mutual connections with a perfect stranger. So if they said, oh, I see you're, you're also connected. You know, Jeremy, so do I. Like you're obviously going to respond to that because you know me. Yeah, or the the other thing, you know, you see one of them here that I'm showing on the screen. Um, uh, Alyssa, I hope you don't mind me uh, using you as the guinea pig. But you know, people will say, "I'm looking to connect with insert you know who whatever type of person you are." So if you're a lawyer and you see an incoming message that says, "I'm looking to connect with lawyers," and it's from a web developer, that doesn't benefit you that doesn't right. benefit that person in any particular way rather it's to your benefit so why you would say it's like saying like i'm looking to like grow my sales leads and you are a lawyer and i sell the lawyers you know i mean that, you wouldn't say that but that's basically what you're you know telegraphing to that person so um i think you want to be careful about that like, you want to make sure that let's say she had person. good guests for you right so she could say John, I see you have a podcast. I have some rock star guests that you may be interested in. I'd love to connect and and that could be a benefit to you. Right. right? And the other thing I just want to point out is that when you do a short message, it's 300 characters. That's it. It's you have a very short amount to communicate, but it's actually much less than that because as you see from my screen here, it's really more like I don't know, this is 45 characters or something before you have to hit that see more button. And not everyone's going to do that. So you really got to grab them in that short amount of time. You know, one person here, Naveen, again, apologies for using you as a, as a guinea pig here. But he says, I hope you're doing good in these difficult times. Well, you know, that's a nice sentiment, but it's, it's rather general. A lot of people are saying it these days. It doesn't really stand out in, in terms of a, a yeah. rationale for why we should connect with one yeah. another. It's it's just at best it's wasted space, wasted opportunity. Yeah, I mean, if you talk to some of the best copywriters, they they and you look at their work, they invoke curiosity. And so if someone invoked your curiosity with that first sentence, like Spencer Spencer Walters there, yeah, um said I like I, I mean I like the picture, but like it, it's almost there. Like something about yeah. if they open some kind of loop there, and you're like, "Oh, what, is, what are they? What are they talking about?" And you have to see more, mm -hmm. but not quite. I mean, it's not yeah. quite, not quite, um, not quite curiosity there, yeah. based. But yeah, but I could see you really only have a sentence. Yeah, but uh, you know, these are better than the ones who don't say anything at all. Yeah, because then the person, the person on the other end, me who's receiving the incoming message, all you have is their tagline, their headline to, to go off of. Yeah. And sometimes people's headline is like vice president. That's it, right? Well, look at Sarah. Like, that's a good example. Like, I'm looking to expand my network. Please accept my connection. <laughs> like, yeah. it's not a compelling yeah. reason because you're looking to expand your network. Exactly. You know, it's just not exactly. that compelling. Yeah, so apologies. It's not, like to pick, it's not like to pick on anyone. I mean, it, yeah. but it's... It's just to demonstrate if you, if one, if you're just blanketing a lot of people, it shows like if, yeah. if you actually, you're reaching out because there's a deliberate reason that you should connect or give to that person. If you write that reason, it will show.
So. Right. So just to kind of sum up what we've covered so far. So first of all, you want to up to optimize your profile. That's incredibly important because people are being people. Other people are recommending you to other leads out there. They say, talk to Ryan Howard or whatever. They Google Ryan's name. Boom. One of the top three results in all likelihood is LinkedIn. They trust LinkedIn. They land on that page and then they're making a split second decision whether to go further with that person. And if that person doesn't email you or doesn't pick up the phone and call you because they were confused or not sure about what your LinkedIn profile said, you don't even know about it. So optimizing your profile is important. Second, you want to build your connections to over 500 plus connections and keep on going. I mean, geez, like it gets really interesting, really powerful when you get into the tens of thousands like Jeremy and I have. And so it's really valuable at that point. Outreach message is critically important. So we talked about that as well. And then finally, the last piece we want to talk about is once you've built a bit of a network, in your industry, people you want to connect with, you want to deepen relationships with, you need to be sharing content on this platform. LinkedIn has really moved towards a content sharing platform. And we, of course, are huge fans of creating podcasts because you talk out your content, which is wonderful. You're networking your content. And then you can share that content very easily. One of the really powerful tools we've used is interactive dynamic audios, we call them, which is, you've probably seen them before. They are Basically, a, a video um, of uh, a static, you got a static image of, of someone, uh, a guest on a podcast, and you've got the words kind of going across the stream. I'll, I'll pull up an example for you here. You've got the words, the transcript kind of pulling across the stream, and you've got a, a headline at the top. Uh, I'll pull it up for you here. There we go. Uh, this is kind of what they look like. They get a ton of uh, engagement and interactivity in conversation with people. And most importantly, it brings you up in other people's feed. And, and then you can take that and then you can proactively reach out to people who've commented. I am a big fan of doing that as well. So reaching out to people who've commented or who've liked it, just checking in with people and seeing how they're doing. Because a lot of times that's how people will raise their hand. They'll like something, but they might not send you a message and say, hey, let's talk about doing business together. Yeah, I was talking about someone the other day too, and and um, what's important about that is a lot of times, at least for me, let's say I'm in bed searching through social media and responding, I'm not having my volume on, so having those words going across the screen for something like that, really, if I'm stopping on it, there you have. I've heard of Double Dare or being slimed. Um, there's Mark's, you know, John interviewed Mark Summers. Um, I don't know if he's, you know, was a part of Nickelodeon or whatever it is, but I love that. I love I worked, that show. I worked with Mark, uh, in college on a, on a game show. So oh, wow. a short lived game show. Yeah. So those are important it, it, because it you could see, one. yeah, you could see the words going across. And so it allows me to consume the content without having to turn my volume on and get yelled at by my wife that why are you turn the volume on? I'm trying to sleep, uh, while I'm sitting here. So. Yeah, that's that's really important that you add that. In fact, it's interesting. We're doing this as a LinkedIn Live, and LinkedIn recently added a feature where it transcribes the words as we're doing a LinkedIn Live. And mm. the reason that they did that, the reason they added in that feature is because of the importance of how many people are going to be scrolling through. They're not going to unmute it, at least not right away. But if they're able to see the words, they might they might watch it uh, all the way through, or it might encourage them to unmute it and then actually engage with it further. So um, that's it uh, for this episode. Jeremy, where can people go to learn more about us? Yeah, you can go to rise25.com, learn more or about page. You can email us if you have questions about LinkedIn, podcasting, these dynamic audios that we also produce and, and everything else. But we're here to help. So feel free to email us with any questions. All right. Thanks, everyone. We'll talk again soon. Bye bye. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the sand right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand.